after the attack in the small alley involving Miranda and Akuma, to Grey Man Season 1 continued. After the incident, Alan met Lenali at a tavern to discuss what they had found so far. He also tells about Akuma's attack, while she tells him they are trapped in the city. This was because Lenali had tried to get out of the city, but she ended up re-entering the city. In the middle of the conversation, Miranda, who had been eavesdropping on their conversation, then shouted to Alan and asked for help to be freed from the recurring day phenomenon. On the other hand, a Hakushaku messenger girl named Road Camelot has arrived in the city to thwart Alan and Lenali's mission. Meanwhile, they go to Miranda's house to escape the Akumas for a while. While at Miranda's house, Lenali asks her about the antique clock in her room. She mentioned that she found the antique clock in front of a shop when the shop owner was about to throw it away because it was broken. But when she tried to activate the antique clock using the key given by the shop owner, it suddenly started working again. Miranda bought the antique clock because it could only work if she used it. That night when the clock showed 12 o'clock, she subconsciously walked toward her bed and fell asleep without any warning. It was then that Lenali and Alan learned that the cause of the recurring day phenomenon was her antique clock. The next morning after Miranda woke up, Lenali asked her to go back to remembering the events on October 28th because Lenali believed that something happened on that date that made time keep spinning on the same date. Miranda was frank by saying that on that date, she was drunk because she had just been fired from her job. Amid that sadness, she subconsciously begged that tomorrow would never come, and the antique clock miraculously granted her wish. Alan also concluded that her words had activated the power of innocence in the clock because only she could make the clock work again. In the afternoon, when Lenali and Alan were walking around in the middle of the city to think of a solution to the strange phenomenon, two level 2 Akuma suddenly attacked them until he fell unconscious. When he wakes up, he finds that Lenali and Miranda have been captured by Hakushaku's subordinates, Road Camelot. They are all trapped in an illusory world created by her. When Camelot attacks Miranda with consecutive attacks, Alan quickly shields her with his body, causing him unable to move due to his severe injuries. Fortunately, Miranda activated the power of innocence in the antique clock so that Alan and Lenali could return to a time when they had not been injured. They then used the opportunity to defeat the four level 2 Akuma from within the barrier created by Miranda. After a fierce battle, they finally defeated the four level 2 Akuma. Later, when Alan almost attacked Camelot, she said that Alan should not kill a human because an exorcist who killed humans would be isolated. He had no other choice but to let her go through a portal without being able to put up any resistance at all. After Camelot left, Alan and the others were freed from the illusory world created by her and returned to Miranda's room. Then after Miranda deactivated the innocence power of the antique clock to restore time to its original state, Alan and Lenali immediately fell unconscious because the injuries they received during the fight were too severe. A few days later, Alan woke up and found himself in the medical room at headquarters with Komui. He anxiously asked about Lenali's condition, and Komui calmed him by saying that Lenali would be fine even though some nerves had been damaged. A young man named Lavi gave Alan the letter Miranda had previously left for him. In the letter, she thanked him and Lenali for helping her to restore time in her town. She also said that she would leave her town and travel to another city to forget all the bad things she had experienced. A few days after Alan recovered, he got a mission from Komui to find the whereabouts of General Cross, who was last seen in a small village. When he arrived at the village, Alan was suddenly arrested by the residents and asked for help to help them solve the vampire problem in their village. The village leader then explained that in the village, there was a castle inhabited by a vampire named Baron Crory. So far, Crory has never attacked or harassed the villagers, but recently he has started attacking some of the villagers and bringing all his victims to his castle. Therefore, the villagers begged Alan to help them because once a man in the same uniform as him had said that he would come to their village to help them, and it turned out that the uniformed man the villagers were referring to was General Cross. The village leader then explained that General Cross had been inside the castle for a few days, and he could escape safely. Soon afterward, he advised that if Crory started causing trouble one day, a young man in the same uniform would come to their aid. Hearing that explanation, Alan agreed to help the residents defeat Crory because he also had to investigate why General Cross came to Crory's castle. That night when Alan was resting at an inn, he was suddenly attacked by several Akuma from all directions. Fortunately, Lavi and his grandfather, Bookman, who happened to be at the inn, immediately helped Alan get rid of the Akumas. The following night, Alan and Lavi go to Crory's castle with the residents to carry out their plan to kill Crory. But when they arrived in front of the castle, he suddenly appeared and attacked one of the residents before finally bringing the citizen into his castle. They decided to enter the castle alone because the situation was too dangerous for the villagers. When they arrived at the castle, Lavi and Alan were confronted by some flesh-eating plants that were able to emit toxic smoke, but luckily, Alan was not affected by the toxic smoke. When the carnivorous plants managed to catch Lavi, 
Alan quickly blew up all the carnivorous plants with his power of innocence. Shortly after, a woman named Eliade introduced herself as Crory's assistant. Eliade, who recognized their uniforms, immediately realized they were exorcists and asked their purpose in coming to that place. Alan replied that they wanted to meet Crory and inquire about the whereabouts of the villagers who were previously brought by him. Hearing this, Eliade threw a chest containing the bodies of the villagers that Crory had previously brought. The carnivorous plant that was still left ate the villagers' body, and the plant suddenly exploded a few seconds later. As a result of the explosion, Alan and Lavi found several tombs made in a circle in the castle's backyard. When they examined the graves in that place, they found something odd because all the villagers in the tomb were actually Akuma. This can be proven by the previous explosion incidents and the many pentacle marks that covered the tombs. On the other hand, Eliade seems to be planning to get Lavi and Alan out of the castle by inciting Crory. She lied to Crory by saying they had attacked her and told Crory to fight against them. Meanwhile, Lavi and Alan finally discover that Crory is only attacking the villagers who have become Akuma to protect other villagers. Not long after, Crory, who had been instigated by Eliade, suddenly appeared and immediately attacked the two of them and the attack accidentally made Alan enter a secret room in the castle. In the secret room, Eliade attacks him and intends to kill him because she doesn't want Alan to take Crory from her. At the same time, Lavi, who is fighting with Crory, asks him to join as an exorcist because Lavi knows that his fangs come from the power of innocence. Crory replied that he would consider his invitation if Lavi succeeded in defeating him. Hearing Crory's challenge, he got excited and began to show his true power. Meanwhile, after Alan's eye power has become stronger, he finally finds out that Eliade is actually an Akuma. Eliade, who realized that her disguise had been exposed, transformed into Akuma and began to attack him. Fortunately, when Lavi defeated Crory using a fire snake, Eliade was also thrown by the explosion. After the explosion, Lavi and Crory finally discovered that Eliade was an Akuma, thanks to Alan's eye power. Crory, who felt he had been lied to, asked why she had not killed him since the first time they met. Eliade was frank by saying she deliberately approached him because Hakushaku had ordered her to take his innocence fangs. Hearing that, Crory felt so angry and betrayed that he immediately attacked Eliade, and the fight between the lovers was unavoidable. At first, it was difficult for him to defeat her because his energy had been exhausted, but at the last moment, he defeated her by sucking all the blood from her body. Although Crory managed to win the fight, he looked sad and heartbroken because he had killed the only person he had so far. Seeing this, Alan approached Crory and asked him to join as an exorcist. That night after things had calmed down quite a bit, Alan asked why General Cross had come to the castle all those years ago. Crory then explained that General Cross was an old friend of his grandfather and that he had come to leave a carnivorous plant. But a few days later, Crory realized that the carnivorous plant that General Cross had given him was no ordinary plant. After Crory was accidentally bitten by the plant, strange things started. All of his teeth suddenly fell out, and he started to grow new fangs, and that's when he started to have a tendency to kill Akuma. The next day Crory decided to leave his castle and join as an exorcist at headquarters with Alan. A few days later, when Alan was in a port after carrying out a small mission from another place, he coincidentally met Lenali, who had also just completed a mission elsewhere. At that time, their voyage was delayed due to bad weather, so they were forced to wait until the next scheduled voyage. Shortly after, the two received information from headquarters to go to the location of one of the generals named Yeager because he was currently being attacked by two of Hakushaku's men. Unfortunately, when Lenali and Alan arrived at the location, General Yeager died, and all the innocence crystals he had collected so far had been destroyed by Hakushaku. The next day, in the seconds before his death, General Yeager said something about the Daiji Na heart, known to be the power source of all innocence crystals or objects. Since his death, the headquarters began to carry out strict security for the remaining four generals by sending several exorcist members to escort them. Komui suspected that Hakushaku was hunting for Daiji Na heart, so Hakushaku started targeting the generals because it was most likely hidden by one of the great generals. Komui insists Alan and Lenali escort General Cross, but before that, they must be able to find his location. In the following days, Alan and Lenali began their journey to find General Cross whereabouts by visiting all the places that he had visited. After several days of searching, they still haven't managed to find him, and Lenali suddenly gets a new mission, so Alan has to continue the search alone. It turns out that her mission is to help Miranda, who is having a hard time protecting some residents from Akuma's attack. After Lenali managed to defeat the Akuma, she picked up Miranda and said that headquarters had recruited Miranda as a new exorcist member. After picking up Miranda to the new base, Komui assigns Lenali to rejoin Alan in search of General Cross. However, on the way, she meets a male finder from another division named Gazu. He asked her for help to accompany him through the forest to the border because he had heard the news that a pack of wolves had appeared in the forest. 
While in the middle of the forest, they overheard the screams of a little girl named Jessica, who was surrounded by a pack of wolves. When Lenalee was about to help Jessica, a male exorcist named Suman had already driven all the wolves away with his whirlwind. Unexpectedly, an Akuma who felt angry because his wolf had been killed attacked them. Luckily, Suman could quickly get rid of the level 2 Akuma with his innocence power in the form of a whirlwind. After that, Jessica begged Suman, Lenali, and Gazu to help her mother, who was sick and still trapped in the next village where wolves often roamed. Initially, Suman refused the request because it was not part of his mission, but after Jessica begged by offering a gold coin, he was willing to help. After arriving at Jessica's house, Suman advises them to leave tomorrow morning because bringing small children and sick people at night is too dangerous. And his prediction was proven when a pack of wolves and some level 2 Akuma began to surround her house and attack them. Luckily, Gazu protected Jessica and her mother while Suman and Lenali fought against all the Akuma until they finally managed to defeat them and the wolves. The next morning after Jessica and her mother arrived in town, Suman returned the gold coins she had previously given. It turned out that he was willing to help her not because of the money but because he had a daughter. On the other hand, Hakushaku seems to be gathering all of his henchmen, known as the Noah clan, in a meeting. At the meeting, he gave each member of the Noah clan a target of an exorcist member they had to kill. In the evening, headquarters received information that many Akuma appeared at the location where General Tidal lived. Komui ordered all finders and some of the exorcists from headquarters to immediately go to General Tidal's location, but when they arrived there, they didn't even find him. It turned out that he was on a short trip with the children to draw the scenery on the hill. That night, hundreds of finders guarding the city's borders began to hold back the group of Akuma who had arrived using a laser barrier. However, due to the large number of Akumas, they could not hold them back for too long, so they managed to enter the city and kill many finders. Although in the end, Kanda and a male exorcist named Daisha arrived in the city and immediately killed hundreds of Akuma in that place with their ultimate strength. During the battle with the Akumas, a male member of the Noah clan named Tiki appears in the city and attacks Daisha to death. The next morning when the fight was over, Kanda found Daisha's corpse hanging from a lamppost with his innocence weapon destroyed. The few remaining finders also intend to bring his corpse along with the bodies of other finder members to headquarters. One of the finder team leaders also mentioned that the few remaining Akumas were flying towards the south, so it was likely that General Tidal was there, and it turned out that finder's guess was right. General Tidal, surrounded by dozens of Akuma, immediately annihilated them all using his innocence which was able to emit holy light. Shortly after he defeated the Akumas, Kanda came with a finder to inform him that Daisha, his assistant, had died. Kanda then invited him to go to the headquarters to be protected from the attacks of the Akuma. Still, he refused and chose to continue the adventure of hunting for innocence power. Hearing this, Kanda had no choice but to go with him and escort him during the hunt for innocence power. Meanwhile, at headquarters, Komui and the others had to accept that hundreds of Finder members and the six exorcists who had been sent to fight Akuma yesterday had died. After paying his last respects and listing all the members who had died, Komui received information that an exorcist member named Suman had not been found. On the other hand, Generals Tidal and Kanda accidentally run into Alan and Lenali, who still haven't managed to find the whereabouts of General Cross. Therefore, General Tidal helped them by saying that Tim Campy was previously General Cross's golem, and every golem was programmed to find its owner. Hearing this, Alan and Lenali said goodbye to find General Cross through the navigation directions from Tim Campy. The next day when they arrive in a town, they meet Lavi and Crory, who has just been assigned to help them find General Cross. That evening when Alan and the three other exorcists arrived at the dock to set sail, a sudden rainstorm fell, and they had to postpone their voyage. They also decided to spend the night at an inn managed by a woman named Lulubel until the next cruise schedule. At midnight, they were suddenly attacked by the Akumas and could not find Lulubel's whereabouts, so they thought she had been kidnapped by the Akumas. However, it turns out that Lulubel is Hakushaku's subordinate who was ordered to kill Alan and the others, so they can't find General Cross. Luckily, Alan soon learns that Lulubel is part of the Noah clan before she escapes by transforming into a cat. The next day, Alan and the others continued to follow Tim Campy until they came to a small village that was very quiet and arid due to a long dry river. After one of the residents told the strange thing that happened in their village about the river suddenly drying up for no reason, Alan asked Lavi and Cory to investigate it while he and Lenali would seek information from the villagers. Alan and Lenali heard the news that there was a girl named Maylene who could predict using a crystal ball. On the other hand, Lavi and Cory, diving into the river, suddenly found a whirlpool and a flash of light in the river. At the same time, several Akuma came and attacked them from above the surface of the river so that they were forced to fight from the river. After successfully defeating a level 1 Akuma, they still had to face a level 2 Akuma that could emit flames. 
Luckily, Lavi and Krori could dodge the flames, but then they saw a dragon-shaped Akuma carrying a little girl who turned out to be Maylene. The Akuma dragon then dropped her into the whirlpool to retrieve the crystal ball from the river so that the Akuma could destroy the crystal ball. Fortunately, Alan and Lenali had arrived and moved fast to save Maylene. After seeing the Akumas who wanted to destroy the crystal ball, they realized Maylene's crystal ball was an innocence power. Lenali then took Maylene flying so that she could approach the crystal ball and activate the power of innocence from the crystal ball. After Maylene touched the crystal ball, the crystal ball immediately released all the river water that returned to the river until the water accidentally killed a level 2 Akuma. As a result of this incident, she finally succeeded in activating her innocence power and solving the drought problem in the village. Meanwhile, the Akuma dragon, who previously failed to destroy Maylene's innocence, was immediately killed by Lulubel. After reporting the incident to Hakushaku, Lulubel then asked her loyal servant girl to keep an eye on Maylene and investigate what innocence power she had. The next day, Lulubel's servant girl disguises herself as one of the residents and asks Maylene for help to help predict her future. Luckily, Lenali approached Maylene, so the servant girl rushed away to escape. Maylene did not realize that the servant girl was Lulubel's assistant and intended to find her whereabouts and help her. After that, Maylene and Lenali found the servant girl by the river. Suddenly, she attacked them, and the fight began to happen. At the same time, Alan and Crory, who happened to be on patrol around the village, saw the incident and immediately helped them. With the combined attack of Lenali, Crory, and Alan, they finally managed to bring down the servant girl. But just as Alan was about to kill her, Lulubel suddenly came to save her. The next day, Lenali and the others took Maylene, who had officially joined as an exorcist, to the headquarters using a horse carriage. But in the middle of the trip, several Akuma came and attacked them. Maylene then used her power to predict all attacks from Akuma so that Alan and Cory could easily defeat them. Unfortunately, Maylene became exhausted and fell unconscious due to her continuous use of her powers. Due to the large number of Akuma, the horse carriage they traveled in was destroyed, and they were forced to split their team into two groups. Crory, Lavi, and Bookman will try to fight the Akuma, while Alan and Lenali will take Maylene to a safer place. However, as it turned out, all the incidents of Akuma's attack had been planned by Lulubel so that she could attack Alan, Maylene, and Lenali separately. While fighting Akuma, who was summoned by Lulubel, Lenali and Alan took turns protecting Maylene, who was still unconscious. They seemed to have a hard time fighting Lulubel's strength, but Maylene, who had come to her senses, tried to predict all of Lulubel's attacks, so they managed to corner her. In that moment of crisis, Lulubel's servant came in the form of a dragon Akuma to help her escape from that place. But she refused to back down because Hakushaku had ordered her to destroy Maylene's innocence power. Hearing that, the servant girl was willing to use all her strength to help Lulubel until she managed to grab Maylene's crystal ball. When Alan tried to grab the crystal ball and attack Lulubel with full force, the servant girl quickly protected Lulubel until she died. After she escaped elsewhere and destroyed Maylene's crystal ball, Hakushaku came and praised her success in the mission. But she seemed to ignore his words while looking at the bell belonging to the servant girl who had sacrificed herself to save her life. The next day, Maylene returned to the village because she could not continue her desire to become an exorcist. A few days later, Alan and Lenali received news from headquarters that they had tracked down General Cross. After getting that information, Alan and the others rushed to the location using a large ship. But in the middle of the journey, a group of Akuma suddenly appeared and attacked them until one of them managed to catch him and bring him into the forest. Lenali was forced to chase Alan alone because only she could fly, while Lavi and the others would fight the Akuma from the ship. After she managed to save Alan, they were both surprised by a giant white figure that appeared in the middle of the forest and made the Akuma's turn to attack the monster. She then took a closer look at the face inside the monster, and she realized that the monster was Suman. Lenali then tells Alan that Suman has turned into a creature called Togaochi and that this phenomenon usually occurs when an exorcist betrays his own innocence power. They tried to save Suman by pulling his body from the creature, but this action trapped Alan inside Togaochi's body. Meanwhile, Lenali is forced to leave Alan because she has to take the little girl who was previously trapped in Togaochi's body to the hospital. When Alan was inside that body, he suddenly saw a memory of when Suman was almost killed by Tiki. Suman, who still wanted to live, chose to betray his own innocence power and stopped fighting. Alan then tried to destroy Suman's innocence power, but the innocence's power was too great and made him thrown out of the Togaochi's body. After that, the body became uncontrollable and moved towards a village until finally, it destroyed the villagers and all the buildings in the village. To prevent further damage, Alan used all his strength to push it to the other side. However, as he continued to use his innocence power relentlessly, Alan started to hurt, and his left arm turned black. Although Alan's condition was very severe and his left arm began to burn, he did not want to give up and tried hard to save Suman. 
After struggling to crawl to get closer to Suman's body, he forced himself to activate his innocence power to destroy Suman's innocence. However, because that method failed, Alan asked Suman to bite his arm so that he could manage to pull Suman out of the body. Unexpectedly, Tiki suddenly appeared behind Suman and killed him in front of Alan. Tiki then showed him a card showing Alan's name and said Hakushaku had ordered him to kill Alan. He cruelly cuts Alan's innocence power which is none other than Alan's left arm, before he tries to kill Alan by inserting a black butterfly in Alan's heart. Moments later, when Lenali and Lavi get word from a male exorcist member named one that Alan has been secured at the headquarters of Asia, one then tells them to continue their mission to go to General Cross's location without Alan. The anime will be continued in the next part. This is the end of Degray Man Season 1 Part 2.